Anchors up, sales at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing right, Jared. How are you doing? You know, I'm doing okay. Um, I, I was I was a week without me. Yeah, I did. I did two episodes with Austin, and it, it's it's fun to do an episode with Austin here or there. Um, oh, I was about to say something really mean about Austin because he typed in the chat, but he's not actually in the VC. <laughs> not not see i would have felt bad if i'd actually said something bad about him but he's not actually in the channel even though i know he's gonna listen to this later anyway uh and then then i did two episodes by myself which um is a thing i like to is a thing i like to challenge myself to do but if i'm being honest i i i uh, I don't I don't know. I I don't know if I do a good job when it's just me. So all of this to say I'm glad to have you back. All right, good to be back. And it's also good to be back a win on the road at night in the Big 10 West. <laughs> uh yeah. And it it felt like a a Big 10 second half of the season. I mean, what's what's rule number four in our sloop cast rules, Jared? Uh, it's a it's a long list of teams not to play. You you want to read rule four? You want to read? Uh, of course. Sloop cast commandment number four. Of course. It, the rule of number four of the sloop cast rules: don't play Appy State, B Bison, Army, Navy. Or night games in the Big Ten West. That last one. Listen, played a night game in the Big Ten West. Not just against a Big Ten West team. In the Big Ten West. Uh, and it, it felt like it for a minute. Um, not. I'm going to say this. I never, thought, I never thought for one second that Ohio State was going to lose the game. I'm going to say that. Never once thought that Ohio State was going to lose the game. Um, Ohio State played a sloppy football game. In many Very. ways, is it was a sloppy football game. Um, there was a lot of bad execution. There was a lot of no, but they got tested because the OL sucks. I mean, you could make the argument that from a run blocking perspective. I'm going to say that again from a run blocking perspective. This was the offensive line's best game. Is that Oof. a low bar to clear? Yes, it is. Oh, that is a low bar to clear. Uh, and by the way, let me say this competition considered. Uh, they, they were better against Purdue, but that was Purdue. Um, competition considered, which Wisconsin has uh, good defensive ends. Maybe a bit lacking on the interior defensive line, but but an excellent group of linebackers, um, good safeties. Like it is a solid defense, but I mean, you know, no, but just they're a solid defense. From a run blocking perspective, this might be one of the best games we've seen from this offensive line unit. Competition considered. Um. Can we just say uh, that you're the goat says, quote unquote, Trey Henderson in the chat. Um, and that Marv's not human. Mar Marv is Marv is uh, an exceptional human being. I'll say that. Uh, he's an exceptional human being. My favorite part yeah, I mean, about I mean, the game was the stop we had at the end of the half. Yeah, that's not a. That, that goal line stand at the end of the half is not something. Uh, the 2020, 2021, or 2022 team could have accomplished for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The defense, defense came out to play. And I, let me pull up, let me pull up the, um, I'm curious about the stats going into the fourth quarter. But I mean, overall, you look at this 259 yards led up here for only led up 14 first downs all game here and held Wisconsin, uh, 
six for 16, not quite, not quite as good as the one for 13 against Penn State. But, you know, six for 16 is, is, is not bad. No, um, I'm curious. I'm, I'm, curious, I'm curious on how, how many of those came in junk time in the fourth quarter. But yeah, Ohio Not State defense. Ohio State defense was just on fire. On fire. And and the and the offense put them in bad positions and they multiple times. Multiple times. And they they stood the stood up and and uh yeah, I'm it's 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 frustrating to see how great this defense is but seeing the offensive struggles that we've seen so far this year we we know how how great this offense can be once it gets clicking but that's a big if and when that that happens though and here and here we are this is eight games into the season we have what is it uh five games left in the regular season here and the offense still hasn't figured out, or I should say, the offensive line hasn't figured it out. This, yeah, it's definitely, definitely. We mentioned it early this season. It's very concerned, and now it's a. Uh, I'm, I'm about to pull out the uh, the red alert here. Like this is, this is going to get us in a really bad situation here at the end of the year, and in the postseason too. Uh, potentially it definitely could um fryer and simmons are just bad i think simmons is getting better but fryer had one of his worst maybe his 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 worst game of the year i'll just say it he had his worst game of the year um again wisconsin has some really good defensive ends um and fryer got absolutely turned around a couple times um it was it was not a good game for him that's, I mean, you know, <sighs> McCord gets hurt in this game. He doesn't miss any snap. Well, he missed one snap, right? Um, he he but he doesn't miss any significant time in the game, but he's definitely limping around on his ankle. Um, and, and while he did, we think, hurt his ankle while running the ball, Y'all wonder why he never let C.J. Stroud run the ball. This is now the second game in a row in which a Ohio State quarterback got hurt. Uh, luckily, as far as we know, only one of them significantly hurt. But second game in a row in which an Ohio State quarterback got hurt. The lost my train of thought there. Oh, yeah, he, he got hurt running the ball, we think. But you know, hits accumulate. Well, it, it was, it was because but, but, he, he dove forward, and then and then the linebacker uh, landed on his on his calf there, right? Or his we, hamstring, right on we his assume, leg there. We assume. I'm just saying, we assume that's where he got hurt. I don't know if we 100 percent know that. It's not. It doesn't matter. Point is, is that hits accumulate, and he took uh, some nasty hits in this game, and you know. He had a fumble that happened coming around, um, coming around Fryer, um, early in the game. He he took another uh, really big hit. Again, Fryer just got turned around. It is a real like. It, I don't know, it's just weird because we've seen the offensive line be pretty decent pass blockers this year but not be good run blocking team this game. It was just the opposite. They look like a really good run blocking line, but not, not a very good pass blocking line. And maybe that was something schematically that Wisconsin was doing. I'm not sure. Um, but it was a real role reversal for the offensive line. Offensive line gave up four sacks in this game and nine total, uh, tackle for losses as well. Right. They, they were, they were getting the, they were getting the backfield, it seemed like every every play here, they're just they, yeah. It, it was very frustrating, very frustrating to see that, and that and that's why we didn't see, uh, we didn't see Stover. I, I don't think he was targeted once. I don't think Stover was targeted no. once at all. And that, and that's just because he he had to go back in in pass block or run block. Yeah, we, there were a couple. Um. 
there are a few targets for G Scott Jr. So I, I think he was maybe getting a little bit more of the pass catching duties with Stover maybe staying back to block a bit more. Um, they they did go into some two tight end or tight end and a fullback, which is still like a two tight end set um, on, on several occasions. That's I'm sure an adjustment because of their pass blocking struggles early in the game. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking I'm looking at the stats. Yeah, none of them zero of all all 26 attempts. Yeah, none of them was directed to to Stover. Uh, Zach said in the chat, um, whiskey without a run game is weird for what it's worth. Yeah, Braylon, for what it's worth, Braylon Allen did average five yards a carry. Um, when Braylon Allen wasn't carrying the ball, however, it was a totally different story for Wisconsin. Braylon Allen doesn't play in the second half. He got hurt when he was playing in the first half, even though he was getting good carries, he did choke the ball twice. Uh, so a real mixed bag for Braylon Allen as well. 10 carries, 50 yards. As is not a bad start to a game. Well, yeah. bad news is he got hurt and he fumbled twice. So. Yeah, yeah that, that they usually just... have that committee uh, behind their stud. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, and it's that, also in a sorry, Kyle, you go ahead. I was going to say that not, not only was it two fumbles, but it was back to back fumbles, too. Yeah, he had looking at here, he had first carry was four yards, second carry, 11 yards and a fumble. Then his third carry, four yards and a fumble. Yeah, that's yeah. It's so, so weird, weird seeing that. And then, yeah, Allen does go down. But I mean, I mean, Acker didn't have that bad of a game. Not, uh, I mean, not as good as Allen, but nine, uh, nine rushes for 34. For, for 34 yards. That's that's not terrible. I mean, almost four yards a a carry that's not terrible and there, there was definitely times it seemed like he he was uh really eating through Ohio State's um defense right down the middle there but but when Ohio State got that second touch or got the touchdown in the fourth quarter when you knew that when Wisconsin had to pass it you you knew it was over at that point it's really weird by the way uh I don't know which direction I want to go here um 10 carries, 50 yards, uh, five per pop, uh, nine carries, 34 yards, 3.8 per pop. Not terrible, but it's no 24 carries on 162 yards. It's 6.8 a pop. Which is what Trey does in this game. Again, offensive line. Having a really good game in one phase of the ball. While having this simultaneously their best game as a run blocking unit while also probably their worst game as a pass blocking unit. Yeah. That's. And it, it's just weird because they've been comp. Yeah, I've already said it. They were competent pass blockers a lot this year, but totally incompetent anyway. Yeah. I mean, I already said it. Um, Kyle McCord. Uh, not directly as a result of the offensive line pay playing poorly, because I'm not going to put it all on the offensive line, but they sure as hell didn't help. But Kyle McCord has a bad game this game. Um, throws his first interception since, was it week one or week two of the season? Um, and then throws two in this game. He, you know, 17 completions on 26 attempts, which isn't, terrible but it's also not very good um I mean, it's fine it's average i mean wisconsin wisconsin had and this is something i went over during know your enemy wisconsin had statistically one of the best pass defenses in the league that you know I, top 10 in a bunch of the key categories that really mattered so you know 17 of 26 isn't fantastic but I believe coming into the game, Wisconsin was only allowing like 55% completion percentage or something like that. And 
again, you you can go back listen to Know Your Enemy, or if you did listen to Know Your Know Your Enemy, I also talked about how they're they didn't really played any like explosive passing offenses to that point either. So I don't know. Uh, it's 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 a thing I spent a lot of time talking about during that episode. If you want to listen to it, but Kyle McCord. Kyle McCord's completion for the year is 64.1%. So you can say it's it's above his average. I suppose that's fair. Now, Braden Locke, uh, quarterback for Wisconsin. This is a weird game to watch. And I'm talking, I'm not even talking about Ohio State for a second. I'm simply talking about Locke. It's not often I do this, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to talk about the opposing quarterback on an island. I have nothing to do with Ohio State. The Braden Locke that I saw against Iowa, uh, that, who you know, who who we have seen come in since Mordecai got hurt, looked terrible. And then through the first quarter and a lot of the second quarter of this game was throwing the ball high, was throwing the ball behind, was throwing the ball in the dirt, looked totally incompetent. I mean, I'll, and, and I'm going to I'm going to say he was awful and I was going to and I'm going to say he's incompetent because there's a butt coming. But he was yeah, he's he's he started off one for four uh, in the in the first quarter. I'm sorry, one for five in the first quarter. And then he goes starts the second quarter one for eight. And then he goes on and completes the next total, eight <laughs> completions then there. Total, oh, that, it's like, whoa, total what? switch flip. I've never seen a total switch flip on a quarterback like that before. I've, I've never seen it. He went from not being able to hit the, the trailer of a parked semi. To Joe Montana for seemingly no reason. He was all of a sudden throwing dimes. I think it caught Ohio State's defense off off kilter for a second because like when you're just straight up not expecting the quarterback to be able to complete balls, you change the defense up. And then all of a sudden he starts throwing the ball really well it is the weirdest damn thing I've ever seen. I've never seen a, a, a switch flip on a quarterback quite like that before. But to be, but to be fair too. Two of those completions went for zero yards right at the goal line, too. <laughs> Kyle, he couldn't have completed those in the first quarter, is my point. <laughs> yes. I don't think it matters. No. I think one of them basically was a shovel pass, too. But he might have missed that in the first quarter. <laughs> yeah. It was really that bad. And that was also just the... That was just the lock that we had seen in in previous games as well. And in, in the little bit of time we had seen him previous to this game. I don't know. It was the weirdest damn thing I've ever seen. I don't even have any bigger point there. It was hey, just but weird. Hey, you, you, go, you go on the road here. The takeaway from this, you go on the road at night over at Madison. You, you take the win there. I know I know how states had uh, recent success. Against Wisconsin, they've ten have beaten ten, yeah, ten in ten, a row. Ten in the, a row right now, going back to two thousand fourteen for the last nine years here. For a team that was like the thorn in Ohio State side side there for a minute, like through the Trestle era, especially. It was it was yeah it was Wisconsin was like the game you circled on the schedule there for a bit. Uh, they they were the team that snapped Ohio State's winning streak in 03. Um, you know, there's the famous J.J. Watt game where he terrorized Terrell Pryor. Um, they were that team for Ohio State for, for a while. And then for Ohio State to then just rip 10 on them has been a, a big accomplishment, in my opinion. Yeah, Kyle puts up the... Uh, win chart there from 2001 through 2010 are they uh even win loss there or the Ohio state is plus one 
No, they're even. Yeah, no, they're they're even four for four, two thousand one through two thousand ten. I mean, there you go. They they were tied up for each against each other, uh, including a stretch in which Ohio State lost three times in four years. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wisconsin was that team for Ohio State for a while. So to, like I said, pull off 10 straight wins against them is a huge deal. I'm just looking at the last wins in Madison here. Uh, obviously, Ohio State won this last one 24 to 10, but then the previous one won by seven points in 2016, won by seven points in 2012, and uh, lost pretty bad in, in 2010 then. So, yeah, it's it's all been close games if Ohio State comes out with a with a W there. It's, it's always been a one possession game and coming out of this game you win by 14 that's you take that you take that absolutely i mean yeah i mean you always take a win yeah uh is but it, but at a cost it needs to be said ohio state sustained a bunch of injuries in this game um, oh yeah you know we don't know the condition of latham at this time we don't really know the condition although he didn't miss any time uh, of Marvin Harrison, who appeared to have hurt his lower back. Marvin Harrison, by the way, you know, just a Marvin Harrison game, six catches, 123 yards, an average of 20.5 a catch and two touchdowns. Just a typical Marvin Harrison game. Um, Abuka dressed for this game, but I don't think he was on the field at any point. Um, so we yeah, still so, don't we yeah, still he, don't he know was... how Abuka's doing. Burke yeah, was back all, and healthy all. in this game, but we saw JT twist up his back in this game. Um, Kyle McCord twist his ankle in this game. Um, there, there were a lot of injuries. And again, everyone, everyone eventually came back into the game except for uh, Ransom. We, we, we don't, we really don't know Ransom's condition. Yeah, Vuka probably comes Ransom. back for Minnesota. I mean, we don't got to rush things for Minnesota. Yeah. I'll say Fle- that. Fleming went out, but then he came yes. back uh, later in the game as and well. And then went too. out again. And then went out again. Um, It was a shoulder, I believe, was his issue. Um, yeah. I really hope it's not. But yeah. Yeah. He... He could come back for another year if he wanted to, right? He has COVID mm-hmm. year in his pocket still. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, and then and then um, obviously we talked about McCord and we talked about McCord uh, getting banged up too. And there's a video out there of uh, seeing McCord walking out in sandals and his whole ankle is just covered in ice, like he just has yeah. ice just taped all around his his lower leg there, uh, an obvious obvious limp there. Yeah, I mean, he was obviously hurting. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, Kyle, do you want to move into the grades? Um, I don't feel like we touched much at all about the defense, weirdly. Um, I mean, we talked about about Wisconsin's offense, which is sort of like talking about our defense, I suppose. We'll we'll talk more about the defense here in in our grading then. So let's... Let's jump into that here. So the gradings here, we will grade all the positions, including the coaching, which is where we will start. Coaching here, I, again, I, I feel like this is, uh, we're going to do this two weeks in a row. It's like, I want to do a the offense coaching and then the defense coaching, the defense coaching, I think it's like an A, and but then the offense, I think, I think it would get a lower one, like a, like a C or something. But there, there were some plays, especially in that in the first quarter. I, I, I saw some things I really like. You got, you got X uh, coming out and doing some some uh, some wide runs there to really keep Wisconsin off balance there because they were just stacking the line there. I, I really like seeing that. 
uh, some creativity, some some counters. I love me a good counter there. I, I thought I thought the play calling was OK. So I think because of that, I'm, I'm actually going to probably give the coaching staff like a B plus. I thought I thought the coaching staff as a whole did really well. It's, it, it was the execution from the players on the field that really that really hurt. So I'm, I, I'll give the coaching staff a B plus. I, I liked what I saw on, on both sides. Okay. Um, I hear everything you're saying except the final grade um, because I think the I think the defensive coaching staff once again has a really good game adjusting to the quarterback. Um, I mean, everything you said about the offense, I agree with. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I think the weighing the defense into your analysis properly, I think gets them a bit of a bump. So I'm going to, I'm going to do an A minus. Okay. Yeah. Going through three quarters, Ohio state led up 162 yards and only eight first downs. Running backs also had a great there. blocking uh, this game. Um, I mean, someone yes had no. to. Yeah. Um, it, tra- Trey's a tra- Trey's a bit of a better, I think, pass blocker back there he than is. some of the other running backs. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Zach playing here. the role of Trey agrees. All right, quarterback here. What would you agree with the quarterback, Jared? On one hand, Comacord throws two interceptions, uh, gives away a fall. I mean, he accounts for three turnovers. Three I really turnovers, don't. Yeah. I, I really don't even want to blame him at all for the fumble because he just got lookout blocked. He didn't hold it too long. Um, a lot of his struggles I'm going to place not on him, but the offensive line. So if, if you're out there thinking, Jared, he turned the ball over three times. He has a terrible quarterback rating. Um, he doesn't throw for over, he, you know, he only throws for 225 yards. <sighs> the offensive line was not doing him any favors in this game. Um, now, but I also need to say that it's not all on the offensive line either. Um, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to do like a B minus. And I am just, I'm trying to cover my bases here because I feel like there's some people who want to, who really just want to take McCord out back at this point. And I think those people are crazy. And again, a lot of the struggles have nothing to not a lot of his struggles in this game had more to do with the offensive line than it did with him, but not all of them. I'm not making a total excuse here. One of the interceptions especially was totally inexcusable. Um, You can make an argument. Both of them were inexcusable. The fumble I'm not putting on him at all. Um, he completely is limp. But, but by the way, one of the things we do and one of the reasons why he does get at least a B minus from me. He has, by any measure, a terrible first half, whether it be his fault or whatever. Three turnovers and a half is not great. Um, It should be said that his fumble that was recovered by Wisconsin was on a fourth down play. Anyway, that probably should be said just before I get too far away from it. Um, so it, the ball was being turned over regardless. It's still to, to me, that's still a turnover on downs. It's still a turnover in, in my mind, whether, whether I, it's, whether it's fair. a turnover on fourth downs or you fumble, it's still a turnover. So yes, right. To me, it's, it's but, but he's still there, but he still got lookout blocked. Yeah. Um, so I'm, but but, but I'm I just want to be... say one, a lot of you know, if I can channel Ryan Day for a second, a lot of toughness by Kyle McCord on this toughness to play through the ankle injury and mental toughness to have a terrible first half. And then 
proceed through the rest of the game with a fair amount of, you know, with, with an excellent amount of composure and emotional maturity and not totally falling apart. And I think there's a great deal of mental toughness there as well. I hear what you're saying, Jared. I do, yeah. but I I cannot give my rating for McCord here. Eight games into the season here, and uh, it's it's not it's not to my standard of what an Ohio State quarterback should be here. I'm I'm going to give McCord like a C minus. I both interceptions inexcusable. How, how long he's been holding on to the ball? He, he just. There's so many times in, in this game, he just, that internal clock just does not tick. Holding on to the ball a number of times, and it seems like every game, ever since Notre Dame, he's had a, um, he's had a uh, intentional grounding. He had two of them in this game as well. Seems to just be a repeating um, play that he, he does every game here. Okay. I, but he wouldn't have in both of his intentional groundings in this game. It's because he had a half of a second to throw the ball. Yeah. The, okay. The, the one, the one definitely was the other one. I can't, I can't remember off the top of my also, head, but also that situation. I mean, I mean, maybe, maybe you could blame the coaching staff for not having some sort of outlet pass for him there or, or a quick out. Well, the, the problem is, Kyle, is you either keep people back to block or you have an outlet pass. That's typically the running back or the tight end in, in depending upon yeah, your package. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you have sometimes you have one or the other, especially yeah, but, if it's a long conversion and you have to send multiple people, you know, deep downfield. Yeah, I mean, if I were to great grade it from the was it from the f first quarter um where was it here yeah like the first quarter first quarter or or really really this the first half there i'd probably give a i'd probably give almost like an f to to him but then the second half i thought he played much better uh actually jared here's a here's a great stat in the second half jared he never missed a uh he never missed a pass in the second half. That's what I'm saying. And to have that first half, which admittedly was bad, we, we can talk about why it was bad and if it was all on him or not. To bounce back mentally after that half and throw 100% completion percentage in the second half shows a great deal of mental toughness and a great deal of maturity for a first-year quarterback. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll still stick with my C minus still. I think you're being rough. All right. Can, can we grading? I'll do what I want. Oh, yeah, I know. And <laughs> I, I think you're being rough. That's all. All right. All right. Running backs. I, I, I thought the running backs overall did a fantastic job. I'm good. I'm giving the running backs an A. I I'm really, a really like what I saw. I really like what I saw from the running backs. I mean, let's, let's just Trey. Just, this is this is Trey's uh, Trey's grade here. Sh shows how much how much we missed Trey here. I know there was a lot of people leading into the season. Oh, Trey's actually not the number one running back. It's Chip. Nope, it's Chop. Nope, it's Chisel. Chisel is the is your number one running back here, and, and Chisel is Trey Henderson. So. Henderson's coming, just coming different. into coming in, coming into this game, twenty eight touches over two hundred uh, all purpose yards in this game. Yeah, Chip is that guy. Uh, Chisel is that guy. Yeah, Chisel is Chip. him. I did. Chisel, <laughs> I get is an him. S. We don't do S's on this show. Uh, S's for the next show. We we only we we stick to the academic yeah. grade on on this show. Yeah. Offensive line, I, I'm just going to do a C because it's like the middle. No. Um, no. I, maybe a C minus because, again, no. like they had an excellent day run blocking. Trey had an excellent game. <laughs> no. How many cuts he had to do there? That That's not. 
That's not how that works. Okay. I mean, that is I'm, just I'm giving, not how that works. I'm giving the offensive line like a D plus. I'm man. Yeah, you, you came I'm, at me awfully hard for only being one notch off. Of <laughs> I, th- I thought you were doing like a, just a straight D or uh, a straight C, but yeah, D plus for me. Not again, eight games into the season, open to see a, by now that they would have fixed things like, like we hope, hope to have seen like we did in 2014 where we are like, this offensive line is bad and they had a turnaround. Really hoping that's what we would see here. Nope, not eight games so far here, five left. Red alert here, red alert. Needs to be said once again, much like in the Penn State game, this is an excellent front seven that they played. I'm just saying, when they were looking terrible, I, I think they look, I think they're having the same problems now that they were in September, but against much better teams. Yeah. For what it's worth. Right. Tight ends. I don't even know how to rate the tight ends in this game. I really, I really don't. I, I, that's only, a good, two, I don't only two, either. only two, only two targets to the tight ends. Both of them was to, was to uh, Scott. Caught both, caught both of them. Didn't see anything towards towards uh, Farmer Gronk. I I guess. Well, I we, guess like a well, an we, average. I'll, I'll say I'll say like a, like can a C I, can plus. I, before, then I I really don't know. Can, can I? Can I? I'm putting a B plus. Let Let me see if I can convince you to match me on this. They contributed incredibly well to the run blocking, which was the best it looked all year. That's fair. Are you sticking with your C plus? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I think I think Zach conv- I think I think what Zach posted there is is correct. A B. I think a B. Okay. Wide receivers. Wide re- it, this is only only three only three wide receivers with reception to this game. Tate had one. Fleming had two. And then Marv. Yeah. And then there was Marv. And then there was Marv. It, it, this is hard because like. Marv gets an A plus in this game. Six catches, another hundred yard game here. An a- uh, Six catches, touchdowns. an average of 20 per two touchdowns like. But where were the other wide receivers? Mm hmm. Yeah. Fleming, you know, does get two catches. He does get 20 yards. Um, You're not going to thumb your nose up at a, you know, 10 yard average. Um, He gets hurt. Maybe if he hadn't got hurt, he stays in the game for a bit longer. You know, as far as grading the wide receivers goes, it does need to be said that they are out. They are out wide receiver number two. And for most of the game, number three after Fleming leaves. So it's not like they have their whole roster out there. Um, so I kind of want to give them a bit of leniency for that. Uh, I think I'll go like a B plus. Uh, but once again, that's being. That's being carried much like right. the Ohio State offense on several occasions this year. That is being carried by Marv. Yeah, it's I'm I would say like a straight B. I was kind of on the fence B or B minus here. But yeah, ag- agreed. It's it's all carried by by Marv here. Telling you that MF right there is not too real. <laughs> yeah. Defensive line. Yeah. Huge, huge game for, for Ty Leak. Uh huge game for both Sawyer and JT um, Sawyer gets six tackles in this game four solos. Yeah, I know that, that's but, quiet. That was a quiet six tackles there. Like that was he was when crashing. I, I that's at the yeah, he was crashing. But when I saw the numbers at the end there, yeah, six tackles. Uh, one of those was a forced fumble as well. 
Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I, I probably, I would say an A. Yeah. I would say an A. I really like, really like what I saw from this defensive line. Very, very solid. Yeah, I agree. I think an A. I don't, I don't know if there were any of those. I was just, I don't know if there's any of those game changing moments, but man, the, 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 the goal line stand at the end of the second half carried not entirely by the defensive line, but largely by the defensive line. Um, I'm still, I'm still going to keep it at an A. I'm not, I, I was really trying to convince myself to go a plus there for a second, but I'm going to keep it in an A. I think I think we need to not give out too many A pluses. Yeah, linebacker. I thought Tommy had a good game. Um, Tommy had a great game. Uh, I Tommy had a great game here. He had a he had a great game against the pass. He was not bad against the. Excuse me, a great game against the run. And I'm not going to say he was bad against the pass, but uh, they it was thrown into his zone a few times. Um, I also just didn't see much of anything from the other linebackers. Uh, Steele does put up some tackles. Um, I don't remember Cody Simon having a huge impact in this game. I, I, I don't remember much contribution. I don't, I don't. I don't remember a lot of standout plays from anyone other than Tommy Eichenberg in this game. Um, Simon did play like I saw him out there. Um, yeah, he was. He had two tackles in this game. Yeah. Um, I just. I don't know. I, I, I don't have any like huge complaints, but I also just don't. I don't remember. Thinking. I remember thinking a lot about the linebackers one way or the other, if I'm being honest. I'm going to go, I'm going to go like an A minus, I think. Yeah. And that's kind of what I was thinking was an A minus though. And we, we kind of talk about like the corners, which is our next one we're going to be talking about. I feel like this year, the linebackers, if we don't talk about them, they had a good game. No, <laughs> linebackers are supposed to make an impact and be seen. They're supposed to, but in years past, though, it's always been linebackers were out of position. Linebackers missed a tackle. And this year, they're just doing what they're supposed to. Uh, maybe. That, that's that's how I feel. All right. Uh, corners. Corners, corners, corners. Hancock. I want to talk about Jordan Hancock. Talk about this, Jordan Hancock. This guy, this guy here having a great, great season. Like he's made so many great plays this year. I, I don't think Hancock gets the credit that a lot of Buckeye fans will give him. I he really... Had a, he, had a, he was clearly like the third cornerback on the team at the beginning of the year, like it was clear, like I, he, he didn't have a great start to the year. Uh, so for some Ohio state fans, they will just essentially like, well, that guy's in my doghouse, and he'll just stay there for the rest of the year. I, I think is part of the perception issues with Hancock. And again, he didn't have a good start to the year, but he's gotten a lot better and he's playing yeah, great now. He's, he's playing very, very good. Like, especially when we, if whenever Ohio State goes up against these more spread happy uh, teams, which by the way, uh, may start seeing that this this next weekend. Uh, I yeah, Hancock Hancock is a very very solid third corner here. Really, really like uh, what I've seen with Hancock these uh these in October. October Hancock has been very good. Yeah, I mean, you know, not not that we need to talk too much about the Penn State game, but um, he was great in the Penn State game as well. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, Burke, Burke does Burke things. Yeah, uh, Ig Iggy Iggy had an okay game. Um, not maybe not one of his best games, but he he was solid. I, I he thought was he solid. was solid. He was he he does he does give up a pass interference call, which for what it's worth was a good pass. Like he got beat. 
and you know hey yeah you know don't get beat twice like go go ahead and just just take the guy out <laughs> you know um but it was a good pass interference call you, sometimes sometimes you get beaten sometimes you just got to grab the guy mm-hmm. and, and eat the penalty yeah. um and, and 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 iggy does get the credit for the fumble recovery too so that's, yes. that's always nice to have on the on that stats there so i give i give the corners today yeah I agree. corners is solid a and then uh, while we're at it let's give the safeties an a too uh it's still jared oh nope i, I apologize for the first time first time oh actually no let me let me find it okay, Kyle, nope. Kyle figure it out he'll figure it out I, I, I found it i found it i found it Ohio state still has not let up a play 30 yards or more yeah uh, lock lock almost got it he almost got it he, he had that one rush for uh what was that in the fourth quarter was it um no it was in the third quarter he it was that first drive he he rushed for 29 yards is it none Almost over 30 is it none over 30 no. i i swear there have been some over 30 i think it's none over 40 i think there have been some 30 plus yarders in this in was this it? season i think the number is 40 I, I could be mistaken um I think there have been 30 plus yard plays. I just don't think there's been okay. any 40 plus yard plays, which again, to go the entire season, uh, you know, Penn state gave up a 90 yarder to Indiana this week. Mm-hmm. And compared to like years past where it seemed like Ohio state gave up multiple 40 yard yeah. Ga- um, plays. Yeah. Not, not allowing one all season yeah. eight games in. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. And last one is special teams. Uh, I didn't think the coverage team was very good this week. Yeah. Um, coverage team was bad, bad. I thought it was a good bad, punt. Bad. I thought it was a good punting game. Um, as far, not necessarily in punt coverage, but I. Um, it was, it was a, the, the game got very trestle esque in moments. That's for sure. Um. Uh, nothing. But yeah, I thought the I thought specifically the punt and kick coverage. Uh, and, and DK is a good returner, so give him some credit. Um, but but I just didn't think the coverage team was all that good. Um, they punted well. Nothing. I mean, they make a field goal. Uh, so that's good. Uh. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll do like a B getting drugged down a bit by the punt and kick coverage. I feel like they're I'll, overrunning I'll a, guys at times. Yeah, I'll give I'll give a I'll give a B minus. Okay. The, the the coverage is not what it needs to be right now. I'll say B minus. OK. You know, not not a terrible report card. Um, well, Kyle's is worse. I, Kyle, Kyle was not being as nice as me today. Kyle, you went. I'm just like double checking this. At no point did you hand out a more generous grade than me. Nope, not this game. It was either even or worse. And most of the time it was, it was worse. <laughs> That's not true. We were actually, we almost, no, we did. We did go exactly the same through the defense, but every single offensive stat I graded better than you. But then we, we went basically, uh, forgive the pun chalk, um, through the defensive units. Right, time to get out some Buckeye leaves. Buckeye leaves. Chat, get ready. You guys get to hand out a Buckeye leaf too. Don't bring that up, Zach. <laughs> uh, Offensive Buckeye leaf. It's not going to happen this year. It is not going to happen this year. Offense. Which we one you want? Start with the, Which one you want? We'll start uh, with the offense. Which one you want? I'll take the other one. I got Trey. I'll take Marv then. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's that's just what it comes down to, right? 
<laughs> which one you which one does the chat want? Or, you know, pick pick a pick a a, a weird option Trey if pick, you want to. Trey picks Trey, so <laughs> all right. All right. Defense here. Defense, I'm I'm gonna give I'm gonna give mine to Hancock. I I really like what I saw with uh with um with Jordan Hancock in this game. I'll I'll give my I'll give my buck I leave to Hancock. I'm gonna go Tyleek Williams. Um two tackles for a loss, uh broke up a pass at the line of scrimmage, gets a sack in this game. Um I'm gonna go Tyleek Williams. All right. Who who does the who does the chat want? There's three names here: Sawyer and Styles and Latham. Uh, Sawyer tell, oh, is that a fourth Tommy. name? Uh, I, I think they're going with Jack Sawyer. How about that? I think they're going with Jack Sawyer. Fair. We'll, we'll, we'll go with Sawyer. All right. All right. And your wild card, Jared. Who who will be your wild card in this game? I am also going with Jack Sawyer. Um, I kind of want to give it to both Jack Sawyer and JT because I think they both had great games. I thought the defensive ends played really, really well in this game. Um, so, but I'm, I'm going to go Jack Sawyer. I feel like we've handed out a bunch to JT. I want to hand one out to him. I, hand one out I to feel Sawyer. like every, every wild card I've given out, it's always been to the defensive side here. <laughs> it's for good reason. Uh, it's the better he, unit this year. Yes. Yes, it is, and and I'm, I'm going to I'm going to stick with it though. <laughs> yeah, and um, I'll go with. So so many so many choices so many yeah. choices to to go. With, I don't I don't know. know I don't think there's a wrong choice in like the starting eleven. Uh, there's not one name. Uh, maybe 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 there's one, but the, <laughs> that you could pick, and I'd be like, really. Yeah, I think, I think, I think I'll go with, um, yeah, I think, I think I'll go with, uh, Eichenberg. I'll go with Eichenberg. All right. Tommy Eichenberg. All right. Um, Kyle, that is the show. Was there anything in the ask Sloopcast mailbag or do we maybe have a couple of those for next? I think the ones we had were maybe for next episode. Um, that is the wrong one here. Um, I think we might be good. How does how does Fryer still have a scholarship? Was yeah, well, one question. We're, we're, that, we will answer mean. that one. That's just mean. Um, um, he's, how much do you? He's trying. How, his how best. much? How much do you cringe when you see Cam Martinez trot onto the field? Oh, see, you guys are just being mean. These, we don't do these types of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, all these other ones are related to the national scope here All right. oh, well, well, oh why is jtt so close so much because he's always there that's it like if you're just always around the ball then you're going to always be close mm -hmm. that's all he's just always there yeah he, right, that's it. he reminds that the, me that, that is the mailbag. All right. He reminds me a lot. He's like a more athletic Cam Hayward is, is like the comp. I can't get out of my head for JT. That is it, Jared. Uh, Ohio State plays Rutgers this weekend here and Ohio State open up as a 19 point favorite. 19. Spoiler alert. I'm picking Ohio State. All right. Um, that's it. That's the end of the show. Um, want to encourage everyone uh, to uh, come join the Discord server. We have lots of fun in the Discord server. I want to encourage everyone to check out our T-shirt store. Uh, Merch.thesloopcast.com. There's a bunch of Sloopcast merch there. And if you want to support the show by buying a T-shirt, but maybe you don't want to wear podcast merch that looks like it's from a podcast, uh, you can go check out a bunch of cool Ohio based merch that doesn't look like merch it just looks like cool t-shirts um 
you can find all of that stuff at 7071.thesloopcast.com. 7071, but 7071.thesloopcast.com. All right, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? You want to talk about hardball? We don't have time. <laughs> we straight up don't have about, time. You want to talk about uh, Brian? Um, you want to talk about Brian? Um, Ference? Ference? Uh, is, was the, I heard a rumor that something might be announced this week. Did, yeah, was anything yeah, announced today. this week? Yeah, today. It was announced today. What, what? I, I guess he's going to coach the rest of the year, but he will not return next year. He's they're it, not going to give him the chance. They're not going to give him the chance to try to increase his. It's mathematically his, impossible. Um, by Iowa standards, standards, sure, yes, <laughs> but no. Hold on, we're not going to do the math live on the show. But he had, he had to. <laughs> was it twenty four or twenty five points a game he had to average in order to keep his job? And they've had zero burgers this year. Like how many points would they have to score through the last four games of the year in order to drag that average over 25? I don't think it's possible. 5,000 Odin says, you know, I don't think it's 5,000, but I think it's, it's, it's close. <laughs> you know what? I'll, we'll, we'll find out now. I'll, you know what? Tune into the I'll Tuesday an episode. Maybe I'll have Kyle, an... Kyle, I'll have that answer for you on the Tuesday. Oh, actually, I guess it's the Wednesday episode this week. The Sorry, Wednesday we're a day episode. late, by the way. But we'll yeah. have that answer. I'll have that answer for you on the uh, Collegiate Chaos episode. So uh, with all that being said, tonight's ending music is by a band called Heart Attack Man, uh, who are, of course, from Ohio. Like all, all if you don't know, we always play Ohio music at the end of the show. Now, if you're listening to the podcast version of this you just stay right where you are. You're going to hear the song. If you're watching this on YouTube, you have to go into the description and click on the link uh, to listen to the song. There's a link in the show notes. They'll link you to the song. Um, I, I, I can't I can't play anything that's going to get like that obviously copyright struck. Uh, so I, I won't be playing the Remrants. Rem. The. Remember, is that is that who did that song? Anyway, uh, tonight's ending, tonight's ending music um, is, is by Heart Attack Man. Uh, the name of the song is C4. So with all that being said, I'd like to um, encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, sports local podcasters. Once again, this is Heart Attack Man. <laughs>